Unity reported yet another mess of a quarter. At the time of making this video, the stock is down 18.34%. Shares are now back under $27, which means we're at around $10 billion in market cap. Ford PE, the current one, stood at 33.8 times. And if you look at the analyst estimates for fiscal year 2024, sales growth of just 10% year over year, and EPS growth closer to 46% year over year. Now that might seem great, but one of the main reasons why the stock is down so much is because guidance does not even reach that number. The guidance does not come close to $2.35 billion with regards to revenue. Big issue here. Now there is a whole restructuring phase happening at Unity right now, which I'm going to discuss in this video. This doesn't mean I'm fully on bearish on the company right now. No, it just means that it is a mess. It's a complete mess, has been a mess actually for a couple of quarters. To turn things around, it's probably going to take some time. So before jumping into that video, if you enjoy this type of content, do leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not. Of course, do share your thoughts about Unity in the comments below. I know a lot of my viewers are still holding Unity or at least interested in that company or in that industry. So do leave your thoughts down in the comments below. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comment to get the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So let's start off here with some comments. They start here by saying, dear Unity shareholders, we believe that Unity plays a critical role in the gaming industry, which is very true. It's basically a duopoly. It's them and Unreal, which is epic basically. Unity enables creators to build and grow successful games and real-time experiences. Approximately 69% nice, of the top 1,000 mobile games are made with Unity, and we continue to see strong traction across industries. Now, moving forward, they are basically doing a reset. There are two phases to that. One is resetting their portfolio to focus on their core business. And the second phase of that reset is about reigniting revenue growth. More on that a bit later on. So if we go and look at the results, at first you might say, oh, this looks actually quite nice, right? Revenue in the fourth quarter was $609 million, an increase of 35% year over year. Well, <laughs> there is more to that story because during the quarter, Unity and WetaFX mutually agreed to terminate Unity's service agreement and entered into a perpetual license agreement with WetaFX internal use of Unity's Weta tools. This transaction resulted in $99 million of incremental revenue, including the release of WetaFX deferred revenue. Excluding this transaction, revenue would have been $510 million, so down 2% year over year on a pro forma basis. Then, with regards to Create Solutions, revenue came in at $290 million, up 47% year over year, which of course includes the incremental revenue from WetaFX. Excluding this transaction, revenue would have been $190 million, down 4% year over year. With regards to the core subscription, excluding China, that grew 18% year over year in the fourth quarter, industries represented 23% of the core subscription as compared to 20% in the third quarter of 2023 and 19% in the fourth quarter last year. With regards to growth solutions, that came in at $319 million, that was up 26% year over year and flat on a pro forma basis, again, with regards to iron source, our performance was impacted by competitiveness in the market and the introduction of the runtime fee policy, which we believe is now fully behind us. Gap net loss for the quarter was $254 million compared to a gap net loss of $288 million in the previous year. Cash provided by operations for the quarter was $72 million and free cash flow for the quarter was $61 million. Of course, the Weta transaction had a positive effect with regards to adjusted EBITDA. In this case, the Weta transaction increased adjusted EBITDA by $102 million, mainly due to the perpetual license agreement. Now, moving forward, they talk here about portfolio and cost structure. Of course, with regards to cost structure, we already got that information the last time. So they are right-sizing their cost structure to grow from a healthy financial position. This includes the previously announced reduction of approximately 25% of the workforce in addition to cloud hosting cost savings 
office footprint consolidation and software license optimization. When you reduce your workforce by 25%, yes, it is going to be a mess in the short term for the company. 25% of people leaving and it's not the only thing. You're reducing other costs, you're changing partnerships, you're exiting businesses, etc., etc. That's why I said it's currently a mess at Unity. Also, by the way, the CEO, we don't know if that CEO will stay at Unity or not. Came from Red Hat. We don't know if this is going to be the permanent CEO for Unity moving forward. Remains to be seen. Then with regards to the portfolio. So they are resetting the portfolio to focus on the core businesses, which we refer to as our strategic portfolio, the engine, cloud and monetization, while narrowing our investments in new businesses to those most attractive, mainly industries. We are exiting businesses where we do not believe that we can provide unique value to customers or generate a sound return to investors. Specifically, our professional services business will be limited to a few selected strategic engagements. We will be exiting the hardware components of our multiplayer business as we shift our services to orchestration and managed solutions and we will stop the independent development of professional artistry tools, which we will integrate into Unity Editor and AI tools and we will exit the Luna business. In aggregate, these businesses delivered $283 million in revenue in 2023 and operated at a significant adjusted EBITDA loss. Going forward, we will guide revenue only for our strategic portfolio as we expect that the non-strategic portfolio will not be material for the year. We anticipate that revenue for our non-strategic portfolio will decline quickly as a result of our actions. Then with regards to the second phase, which is the reignition of growth here, they will update us on progress and plan to share our sustainable growth model with us towards the end of this year. And so with regards to guidance, if we look at a guidance for this quarter adjusted EBITDA as well, this is what we're getting right now. So for the first quarter, they are guiding for 515 to $420 million in revenue, for our strategic portfolio and 45 to $50 million in adjusted EBITDA for the total company. Our strategic portfolio revenue guide for the quarter is flat to prior year as the organization completes the portfolio and cost reset that we have described above. Our adjusted EBITDA guide represents an increase of 67% year over year, which include a partial impact of the cost action offset by cost from our non-strategic business. For the full year, we are guiding our strategic portfolio to $1.76 to $1.80 billion in revenue, up 2 to 4% year over year, and $400 to $425 million in adjusted EBITDA for the total company. We expect to accelerate revenue growth in the second half of the year and to exit the year with double digit growth. Our adjusted EBITDA guide includes the benefits of the cost reset, which will have a full quarter impact as of the second quarter. We expect to exit 2024 with adjusted EBITDA margin of 25%, which by the way, if you look at those numbers right now, adjusted EBITDA margin was increasing quarter over quarter, Q4 here, 30%. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that stock-based compensation expense has also been going up quite a lot here, quarter over quarter. I mean, we were trending down, but in Q4, that is up by quite a lot. Definitely also something to keep an eye on. And so if we look at the stock right now, it is under $27, which is exactly where it was the last time it reported earnings. Of course, we had that run up towards the $40 mark, got a rejection. Then now we're back here under $27 because of this earnings report, which again shows that this company is still a mess. Remains to be seen what happens going forward. Certainly everything that they're writing in that report is, is positive, fine, but the market just doesn't trust them right now. It's been so many quarters that they messed up quarter after quarter. Again, they're operating here in a duopoly and somehow they managed to screw that up. Of course, it also is very important to note, again, this is just an interim CEO. The market doesn't like uncertainties. If in a month or two, or maybe a week or so, I don't know, just speculating, that CEO suddenly leaves. This is a company without a CEO. It's a problem. All those restructurings, all these layoffs, exiting businesses, cost cuts, all of that, 
take all of that into consideration and think from a Wall Street perspective. Lots of question marks going forward. $27 per share could be a very good deal if they manage to turn this around. Remains to be seen. I think investors will have plenty of time to accumulate more shares in the coming months and quarters. That's just my opinion. Of course, do share yours down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.